If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're shopping for your first guitar interface, and if you're doing that, there's a good chance you're planning to use it with an amp plugin like those from Neural DSP. At the very least, that's exactly what I did, and in this video I'll be letting you know why I love my Scarlet, but also why I ran into some significant and unexpected issues getting it set up. The Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 is a simple and small USB interface featuring two inputs which each double as quarter inch and XLR, and a left and right quarter inch output. Taking a look at the face of the unit, we'll see both inputs, each with an accompanying gain knob and instrument and air buttons. The gain knob is surrounded by an LED that responds to its corresponding level, with green representing a stable level, orange representing a level that's close to clipping, and red representing a level that is clipping. This makes it very easy to set your gain levels without needing to refer to additional software or even listen to your sound, although doing all of the above would still be best. The instrument button below will modify the gain and impedance to comfortably accept an instrument, such as a guitar or bass, while leaving this off is suited for microphone, keyboard, or external mixer inputs. The adjacent air button replicates a classic microphone preamp. To the right you'll see the 48 volt button, which enables phantom power for microphones, and the direct monitoring button allows you to hear your raw input without any factors that might add latency. Lastly, you'll see the monitor level, which controls the output level from the rear panel outputs on the Scarlet, as well as the headphone jack and level knob. Note that the headphone jack is a quarter inch. Now looking at the rear of the unit, you'll simply see the USB-C port used to connect the included cable and the quarter inch line outputs. Oh, and there's some kind of lock thing there, I don't know. Moving on, let's talk about the setup. While you can technically use the Scarlet right out of the box, you'll need to download the appropriate drivers to avoid latency and use it properly. A link to the driver downloads is conveniently found on the interface's memory when first plugging it in. And if you weave your way through the obstacle course of account creation prompts, you can get the necessary drivers without any hassle at all. Focusrite also provides a companion software called Focusrite Control, but for this interface the software does hardly anything more than acting as a digital remote for the physical controls on your Scarlet's hardware. At this point, I was excited to plug in and unlock the true sound of my Neural DSP plugins, which I had previously been playing through with only a USB mixer, leaving me with a bit of latency and not the best tone. At first, however, I was getting even more delay through the Scarlet. This is because I had my audio device in the plugin set to ASIO for all, whereas the Scarlet needs the Focusrite USB ASIO setting to be selected. An easy fix, right? But when I switched to the Focusrite setting, only the Scarlet was selectable as an input or output. Obviously, I wanted to use the Scarlet as my input device, but my monitor speakers were plugged directly into my PC, which means I could no longer select them while using the Scarlet for my input signals. A bit of time on Google confirmed my theory. The only way to use the Scarlet and hear an output from the plugin or DAW it's running through is to attach your speakers or output device directly into the interface itself. Fortunately, my speakers have quarter inch inputs and I have a surplus of cables to connect them, but this was an unexpected and potentially problematic step that any buyer should be aware of before purchasing this interface. Now, as this is my first audio interface, I'm not aware if this scenario is exclusive to Focusrite products, or perhaps an issue that you would encounter with any audio interface. But as this video is made for an audience that is likely also shopping for their very first interface, I think it's a valuable warning nevertheless. Okay, so with that issue out of the way, how does the Scarlet perform with Neural DSP plugins? Give it a listen. <laughs>
Compared to the experience I had playing through a cheap USB mixer, the Scarlet provides nothing short of a complete evolution. The tone I'm getting from my archetype Tim Henson and Pliny finally sounds as good as the demos made by players like Jack Gardner and Tom Quayle. Despite my music PC being on the weaker side with a Ryzen 3 2200G processor, I'm able to set my latency to the absolute lowest setting possible with no issues. As an additional bonus, since I'm no longer using ASIO for all for my output, I'm able to play other sounds through my speakers while simultaneously playing through the plugin. Practicing with YouTube backing tracks has never been better. Also, running the Scarlett's headphone jack into my PC's microphone input allows me to capture my guitar and any backing tracks in OBS, so I can finally do guitar live streams without sacrificing quality. Overall, the Scarlett is a great choice for your first audio interface. It's a perfect companion for those of you playing through amp plugins and recording in DIWs. As long as you are aware of the need to connect your output device directly to it, this interface can be a big step into the modern world of digital audio for the musician on a budget.